In this video we explore the port of Skagway. We take another fabulous excursion that involves a spectacular scenic railway and coach journey. We stop off at the Lawyer's Village, or do we? And we visit a brothel. I never thought I'd be saying that on a video introduction. And the other thing I never thought I'd be saying is, we struck gold. Good morning. Today, Good morning. Yeah, we're a bit tired because we were a bit silly yesterday. We had a bit too much of a late night at the Rock and Roll Club. What's it called? <laughs> Rock and Roll Club. Rolling Stones. What is it, Eddie? Come on, you can do that. Rolling Stones Rock Room. Yes. Anyway, we had a fun night with our friends. Um, but look, the, we have arrived in Skagway. Look at this. How beautiful is the scenery? And our neighbours, the Celebrity uh, Solstice and Grand Royal Princess. Oh, Royal Princess. Yes, the same as yesterday, wasn't it? Oh, princess is oh, and Crown Princess is there. Wow. So, uh, four ships in port today. We are off on a... Can you explain our excursion, poorly? <laughs> no. <laughs> we are going on... Um, we're doing a train journey. We're going to a salmon bait place. We are going um, somewhere else. <laughs> And we're doing stuff. Yeah, lots of stuff. Yeah. Lots more stuff today. So uh, another full day on, but we're loving exploring Alaska. So we're going to go to the Orange Club now, grab a quick breakfast before we meet Mark and Marie and go on our excursion. So we had another fantastic bre breakfast in Club Orange before we had to be out on the dockside for our excursion to Skagway. And what we were doing, which we were really excited about, was the White Rail Yukon White Pass White Pass Yukon Railway. Yes, I've got it right. Excursion, which also included a stop at Liarsville and also a stop at a brothel. So, a very entertaining day. We made our way ashore to start the second excursion of the cruise. The Conning's Dam looked even more impressive against the mountainous Alaskan scenery. We sidestepped the photographers with all the skills of a professional athlete and made our way to the meeting point. So we got on a, um, a coach from the dockside to be taken up, right up to the top, to get the train back. Now you can have options of doing the train there and train back. We chose the coach up, which gave us some fantastic yeah. views. Then we were going to get the train down. And it was lovely because Cheryl... We're originally from Trinidad and Tobago yeah. and lives currently in Utah, but is working the summer in Alaska yes. and having a great time. And she has obviously studied hard because she knew her stuff and on the way up, so basically we're going up the windy roads up to the top of the mountain where we're going to get the White Pass train yeah. to go back down. Yeah. Skagway is a first class borough on the Alaskan Panhandle. It has a population of approximately 1,200 but that doubles during the summer when more than a million tourists descend on the area. It became most famous during the Klondike Gold Rush of the late 1800s when hundreds of thousands of men and women came in search of gold that they hoped would change their lives forever. One observation we had on the roads, which we've never seen ever before, because we don't get a lot of snow in the UK where we live, they had these arms, didn't they, like metal oh, arms yes. coming out, so that when they get so much snow, were they 20 feet high? I, I'm not sure how high they was, but they were quite high, about 20 foot high, and what they... High as what, the bus, weren't they? Yeah, well they were higher than the bus, 
and what they were shaped like if you can imagine a hockey stick so they yeah. went up like that and then they curled over at the top and they were very brightly colored and they go like that so because the snow gets so deep that when the snow players are playing in the road they can still see where the road yeah. is yeah because otherwise like, it's sheer drops yeah, sheer, i'm thinking oh my god yes. you need danger money to be on a <laughs> snow plow but um, I, we find that very interesting oh, we did. because it's that's not um what we normally see but anyway we got up the top didn't we to to fraser now this is where it gets confusing too because we were told you must take your passports on this excursion we're like yeah they always say take your passports off nobody really checks them but thankfully we did because we didn't realize we were going back into Canada to get back on the train to come back into America <laughs> so that was um, something that it was, was quite bizarre it was very bizarre yes. but all we had to do was hold our passport up against our face and then the customs officer would come and just clock that we all had relevant passwords passwords passports and what really surprised me is when he got to us he looked at our passports and he said are you Paul and Carol? <laughs> no, he didn't. He said to me, do you mind moving your hand because I can't see your face because I have my hand over. Oh, but anyway. <laughs> How are you? Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Next stop, the train. Mm -hmm. So as soon as we got up the top, we did have quite a queue because there was lots of people with customs getting on and Cheryl was going to get a bit, getting a bit fraught. She said, oh my God, we've never had this queue. But don't worry, the, the train will wait for you, which it did. And we got off the coach to get on the train and it was like going back in time. Um, the people that were working on the train were dressed appropriately in the sort of pe not period costumes but um yeah one, from was, the time. one was dressed as queen victoria <laughs> um yeah <laughs> do you know what i mean from the 18th yes, whatever course, it was of course i know what you mean i was there <laughs> yeah. basically some of the guards oh. the female guards were dressed normally but just in a guard's outfit but there was a couple of male guards on there and they were dressed in very very old school old-fashioned train guard yeah uniforms. as you can see from here Which the White Pass is named after Canadian Interior Minister Thomas White. The White Pass Railway began construction in 1898. Before the railway began construction, engineer George Brackett built a toll road, but prospectors using it refused to pay the toll. So Brackett jumped at the chance when the White Pass and Yukon Railway Company offered him $110,000 for the right of way allowing them to construct most of what we see today. He's recovering. <laughs> Thank you. Look at that. I'm just getting... Hello there. Hi. You bet. <laughs> Actually, that bus, uh, you just beat them. So, we're fine. And there was also um, a guy who was unseen until right at the end who narrated the whole journey. So look to the right you'll see the songs and so look to yeah. the left you'll see the, well, the, the why don't we show you some of the well the show you some of the um scenery that we've seen and give you a little bit of history that we've learned along the way do you know that'd be a good idea it would be the white pass railway doesn't just have its history in gold it was used extensively in the second world war supplying the u.s army for the alaskan highway construction project in 1982, all operations were suspended after worldwide metal prices plummeted, rendering the railway redundant. But in 1988, the railway reinvented itself and opened as a tourist attraction, operating between Skagway and the White Pass Summit, 
which is the highest point of the railway with an elevation of 2,888 feet. The chance to travel the 20 miles in these amazingly restored vintage carriages and witness such spectacular views was an absolute joy. Fab wouldn't fall in Morgan. Yes. Yes, it was. I really enjoyed it. Next stop is uh, Salmon Bake. Yes, that was fabulous. Oh, was it? It yeah, was. really good. You're better. I finally feel human. <laughs> good. <laughs> I refuse to bow down to commercialism. <laughs> so let me have. <laughs> so as we get off the train, Cheryl's waiting there with the bus, yes. with the coach, to take us off to Lyersville. That's right. Now, and the, what I thought was great was, as soon as you got off the coach, they gave you fifty dollars in cash each, didn't they? I didn't get fifty dollars. That's because it's liars, Melanie. I was lying. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, no, so they, say they say it's a liarsville. Brief, a little brief history about liarsville. Liarsville was a massive tented community that was set up in 1897 at the start of the gold rush. Yeah. And so this village was set up. There was saloons built and bathhouses and all sorts of stuff built and what people didn't realize until they got to Lyersville was they were still 500 miles from where they needed to be which is where the gold was in Canada they were in America in yeah. Alaska so the reason it's called Lyersville is because when the gold rush started, a few people found gold, and of course they towed somebody, they towed somebody, and then it all started going. What was the reporters, wasn't no, it? No, 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 not the reporters. This is when it initially started. Okay. And then, when lots of people started coming there, somebody in you know one of the big cities in America said, uh, who had a newspaper, sent these reporters off to this place where this tented community was, which at the time wasn't called Lyersville. And when they got there, the reporters realised that they were 500 miles away from the gold. And to get where, to where the gold is, you had to climb over the mountain yeah. into Canada, and due to Canadian uh, Canadian law, you couldn't just turn up with the clothes on your back, you had to have sufficient uh, supplies 
yeah. that you could survive. So you had, and the only way to get that, because there was no railway at the time, was to carry it over the mountain. Yep. So when by we, yourself or with by an yourself animal. yourself or with a, a horse or hundreds dog. And hundreds of horses got killed. And I said, we sent a statue in town where there's a dog with like a saddle on his back carrying bags yeah. and all that. So any way you could get these supplies over the mountain, 100,000 people turned up at this village. They reckon less than 15,000 actually made it over the mountain, and out of that 15,000, probably less than 10% actually got rich, got rich by finding the gold, because a lot of the gold had gone by yeah. then, hadn't it? So when the reporters turned up, they realised they'd have to make this track over the hill, they thought, well, we're not going to bother with that. So in true journalistic fashion, they just made up all these stories mm. about how wonderful the gold rush was and how people were pulling lumps of gold out of the streams as big as, you know, as big as your fist and all this. Nuggets. But the trouble is, when they sent all these reports back to the big cities, that then fueled the fire yeah. to make more people come out who were then severely disappointed when they yeah. got there because they were still 500 miles away from the gold. <laughs> Thanks for waiting for me, folks. I got a bit tied up at work. You know how it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lyonsville in our HG98 Gold Rush Camp. Here's the plan. As soon as you get off this bus, you're going to wander on down the way to the right, head into our Gold Rush Camp. Take a minute, look around, learn some history, good or bad, and then we prepared a little song and dance for you. You mind if we do a show? No, oh, no. Not the bus says no, because we're doing it anyway. <laughs> now, if you cheer loud enough for us during that show, we will teach you to pan for gold, which I think is a pretty fair trade. <laughs> now, once we have filled up your heart with song and your pockets with gold, we'll send you on over to the Liarsville Cookhouse. Now, normally we have an all-you-can-eat salmon buffet, salmon, chicken, salad, coleslaw, and all that good stuff, but, uh, golly, a moose got into that last night, so all we've got is... PB and J on rye. <laughs> <laughs> Liar. Liarsville, the first one out of the way. Uh, we got all that good stuff and more, so I hope you came hungry. And the saloon is open for beer and wine. We're running a special today. For every drink you purchase, your bus driver gets two. Now, let me hear that howl one more time. Make my ears ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, what on earth are we doing? <laughs> Hi there. Thank you. All those reporters, they came here to Skagway. They were immediately hit in the face with what we call a dose of reality. Because they learned a few things. They learned that when they are here, they are still 500 miles away from the gold field. Passed away, and at last one day, came a girl with a story straight. A long deserted line of track lay back to the big horn race. Of a little hot cloud, great divide, and a white man sitting still, lying there by his lonesome self. And I figured that must be Bill. But this camp um, visit was, was very entertaining. They yeah. did a little show. There was all the saloon girls that were obviously entertaining the men during that time. Um, well, not the same ones, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> they look well. Yeah, they did look well. Considering they were 137 years <laughs> yes, old, they were quite, did quite well. But what, also what we did was um, they showed us how to pan for gold. Thanks for coming out today, guys. Strike it rich. <laughs> Thank you kindly. Come on, come on. Come get your pan and dirt today. Dirt and gold. There you go. Thank you. Find yourself a place in a trough with water. Okay. Oh. There we go. Do you want to go first then, Crawley? Right. Do you remember the instructions? Yeah. No. <laughs> so you gotta shake it. 
and swirl it. All right. If anyone at this trough would like an example, I'm scooping it full of water. I'm shaking to keep the gold at the bottom of the pan. When I tilt my pan forward, I'm gonna shake my dirt to the very edge, just like this. And then keeping it at this crazy angle, I'm gonna wash, wash. See how stuff came out? That's what we want. Oh. Once you've got about a tablespoon of dirt left, you swirl until you see oh, shiny things. Now, what do you say? What do you say? Um, Practice this. The real gold is gonna be <laughs> what do we say? Oh, for the Klondike. Oh, Hope for the, the Klondike. Klondike. <laughs> for the Klondike. You are filthy, filthy rich. Yes. <laughs> there it is. We've got gold. So there we are. Oh, there's so many flies here, aren't there? Yeah. It's like, ah. But look, we got our gold. Yeah. We love gold. <laughs> Here's my gold. That's how much I got. Look at that. I think I've got more than you, have I? Well, probably. <laughs> See if we can upgrade our cabin when we get back, mate. All this, uh, all this money yeah, we well, that was a bit of fun, wasn't it? So, where are we off to now, then, Paulie? We're off to. Salmon bake. Yes. We're off to fry, try some salmon bake. No, I, I was just one, yeah. Yeah, and just some salt. Some glaze on it? Yes, please. What is that glaze? Brown sugar and butter and pineapple. Oh, lovely. <laughs> you add me a Perfect. brown sugar. <laughs> Thank you. The well, salmon's absolutely delicious, isn't it, Paulie? What do you think's yours? It's lovely. Mm. Yeah. Have you tried that sauce? Yeah, it's, on a, yeah, it's fun. Like a butter, yeah. buttery. Mm. So, Paulie's trying the cornbread with them. Um, What's the sauce again? Butter? Brown butter sauce. Brown butter sauce is the future. Mm. Come on then. Looks like cake. Mm. It tastes like cake. Can I try it? No. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Because it all falls apart, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. It's just that like sauce, but it's like cake. Mmm. Can you drop it in? Can I have some more? No. <laughs> right then, so, we've just had our salmon bake, and now we're going to a brothel. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but one big tip for this tour is make sure you spray yourself or cover yourself in mozzies. Not cover mozzies. Cover yourself in mozzies. <laughs> Have you smelled with mozzie spray or lotion because it's full of flies and Paulie's just been bit on the face, look. So, um, should that be the top tip, wouldn't it? No, my, my top tip would be either dress as a beekeeper, <laughs> um, a wetsuit maybe, something like that, or, um, with one of them big metal divers helmets. <laughs> but anyway, we're off to the Red Onion. Because because of the flies, everybody sort of came out about 10 or 15 minutes early to get on the coach, just to get away from the flies. Yes, that's right. And Cheryl said, because you're early, what I'm going to do, because we've got our next place we're going to, we've got a time booked. For 2.30. So, so we can't turn up early. So she then took us to this viewing point, which had views all over Skagway. Yeah. Right from one end of the town to the other. Because it's not a very big place. No, not at all. Including where all the cruise ships yeah. are. So that was quite interesting. And then, back on the bus, to our last stop, which was a brothel. Yes. Ma'am, hi folks, how are you hi. doing today? <laughs> so only two people are doing good, okay, <laughs> all right. Well y'all, welcome to the Red Onion Saloon and Brothel Museum. Don't worry, the services have changed since 1898. I get to be your personal horror historian here today. <laughs> My name is Madam Rosie Peaks. I'm known for my enormous heart here in Skagway. And I want to give you a little lay of the land so y'all know what to expect. We're going to go up the uh, stairway to heaven. I do have refreshments for you guys. I have two options. I have champagne. Mm. But sir, if you're feeling frisky, I do have water on the rocks. <laughs> Couple things. Cheryl will meet you here right after the tour exactly at this spot. Or if you want to walk around town, you're more than welcome to. But I do have a little uh, secret about Miss Cheryl here. Have you all enjoyed your time with her today? <laughs> yes. yes, well she is actually known 
as the second best ride in town. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys did enjoy her lip service, make sure you leave her with a little bit of love before you say your final goodbyes, all right? You guys ready to get to it? Yeah. Just the tour, of course. Don't get ahead of yourselves. All right, follow me, folks. Let this toast go out to all of your love lives. May they be just like a kitchen table. All legs, no drawers. Cheers. Welcome upstairs to the original structure, my friends. This is the dolls. Yeah, these are our replicas. These ones on top actually are uh, new Red Onion history. When a new Madam Tour Guide comes to join us for her first season, she's encouraged to make a doll that looks just like her. I'll give you three guesses which one is mine. It's the only redhead. <laughs> Just take a look around at the original wallpaper, the standing on the original floorboards, the knob and tube wiring. Green stripes, those antiques by you, those are also red onion antiques, though after we were a brothel. Because we were only a brothel for two years, remember? And 1900 to 1978, we've done about 13 different things. We've been a telegraph station, we've been a laundromat, a union station. We were even a uh, barracks in World War II for the U.S. infantry. So the antiques that you see around our museum today from different time periods are Red Onion original or Skagway antiques. So our working girls here are truly only pocketing $1.25 a trip. I know that sounds low, just keep in mind a couple things. First, it's pure profit. They don't have any other living expenses. They're working 12 hour long night shifts, so they can actually yield about $65 in that one single day's work. And the main reason why many women turn to this profession was not only because it was illegal for women to stake claims in the Klondike, but there was a significant wage gap here in town. It cost about $6 a day to live here in Skagway. Any girl working a respectable trade, like a maid or a laundress or a seamstress, the most she could make was actually only $3 a day. Our working girls were profiting the most out of anybody in this entire town. So they really only had to work a couple days or weeks before they could make their next move. That's another reason why the turnover was so high. And a lot of these girls' next move was to buy property and start businesses here in town. In fact, the working girls who turned into the business owners were some of Skagway's very first property owners. Their very first business owners of our town, and because they were making the most money, owning property, and taxed the highest, they demanded and received the right to vote here in 1900, 20 years before women's suffrage. And the tenacity of the women of the past has led to the terrain of today's town. 60% of our businesses, tours, restaurants, and shops are actually owned and operated by women, including our own establishment. And we're actually the only women's history tour in all of Southeast Alaska. So thank you guys so much for your time, your energy, and your patronage. This is an oral tradition that we pass down every year. And without your support, we wouldn't be able to tell these stories of these women's sacrifice and give them the stage they deserve today. So it was really informative, great fun, we thoroughly enjoyed it, it took about half an hour and if you're in Skagway and you want to go, it's only $10, it says a big sign on the door, yeah, $10, $10 yeah. to have a tour of the brothel, so it's worth it because some of the stories that she was telling and, and how hard the women worked, wasn't it? It was like, I know that sounds... I don't, I don't think you should have put quite the hard. emphasis on hard <laughs> the women, and but what it, made me smile as well, she said that when when the customers came in, she said her name was Rosie Peaks. Yeah. And when the customers were going out, her name was Gladys Over. Yeah. <laughs>
So then uh, we could have gone back to the cruise ship uh, port with Cheryl, but we, uh, we said, no, we're going to stay in Skagway for all ground. And I've taken so much footage and photos on this, um, well, on our land-based tour from Calgary right through Banff and Jasper and on the Rocky Mountaineer, which if you haven't seen those, make sure you go and check those out because we had a most amazing time. I had to go out and buy a new um, micro SD card because I was just running out. And thankfully, Cheryl, full of knowledge, said, make sure you go to um, Fifth and Broadway and you'll see a, a photo shop next there. Next door to the Grizzly. Yes, next door to the Grizzly convenience store. <laughs> so after a great look around Skagway, we uh, it was about, I don't know, half, five, six, and we were sailing away at 7.30. So we thought, let's walk back. It was about a 15 minute walk, easy, yeah. easy flat walk. Um, well, it wasn't a 15 minute walk, it was about a 40 minute walk. So we stopped about every eight seconds to take a photo. I know. There were so many fascinating things to see. And I know, obviously, a lot of the buildings have been refurbed because of how old they are but they've just retained this amazing charm everything's wooden it's yeah. everything's different colors we've never it's, been to like no, a saloon town have we been to Genoa in here and i'm really loving that because it's quite we've n just not done yeah, it and it's, it's fascinating it is it's got and so much history it's great all the pavements or sidewalks if you're american are boardwalks so all the pavements are boarded I didn't Which, notice that. So you were only walking up and down them all day. I know. And all the pavements were boarded. I knew that there was flats. So I thought, oh, anyone with a mobility scooter would be fine here. Store, yeah. But they were all boarded and they'd only stop becoming boards when you had to cross the road. And I thought that was absolutely fascinating that they'd retain that feature. Yeah. Amongst so many other good features. Great town. We'd like to stay there for a couple yeah. of days because they, uh, they got a couple of pubs there that looked like they had some interesting restaurants. And it would be nice to have done more in the area. We really liked yeah, Skagway, didn't we? Yeah. Loved you know yesterday. I had a fantastic day. But as a town, I, I felt, yeah, better, yeah, I thought, oh, we'd like to come back. Now, after the previous day's debacle where we didn't eat anything, we thought it'd be prudent that as soon as we got back on the ship, despite the fact that we had our backpacks and stuff, yeah. we went straight to Club, Club Orange, Orange and we had our dinner, yeah. which again was fantastic, oh, service. Good. Excellent food, actually. Yeah, as you can see here. Right, so we're back in Club Orange. We just had a fantastic day out. I thought, let's just go and grab some food. And as you can see from the menu, it's another great selection of fabulous food. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Andrea. You're very welcome. So I have ordered the French onion soup, which smells deli deline, divine, and Paul's got the um, spring rolls, which smell delicious. Absolutely Am I going out? Yeah, you're going in. Nice. Yeah, that gooeyness. Oh. oh, that's really tasty soup. I just need to sort it on my bread, but look at that. So I've gone for the uh, strudel with the red uh, Thai curry sauce. Look at all his prawns. He's giving you double whammy there, hasn't he? Yeah, it's gone big. Yeah. They're hot. No, they're not. Well, they are hot, but they're not defensively hot. That's delish. Is it? No. Spicy? No. No. It's sweet and sour, isn't it? It's sweet and sour, it's not. It's not overly spicy. Spinach, mushroom strudel with a Thai red curry. Oh, that sauce is delicious. And I got my favourite line, broccoli. Mm. Mm. That's really quite spicy. Well, as you can see, my plate is clean. That was absolutely delicious. The Thai sauce was quite spicy, but it didn't blow your head off, which really tasted. I think Paul's struggling with his shrimp. Isn't you, Paulie? Uh -huh. <laughs> it's fabulous. Mm. So this is Club Orange, as you can see, with the guys in the corner who are just absolutely fantastic in the service in here has been superb. And as you can see, the tables are well spaced. Sometimes you'll be sat on a table for four, sometimes there's some tables for twos, some are a little higher than others, but actually really, really comfortable. So I was worried about these tables because my legs are very short, um, but they're really comfortable. So, uh, yeah, this has been a real treat, hasn't it, this cruise? 
I know uh, we're thinking, oh, we should try the, well, we've tried the main diner for lunch, haven't we? We should go to the buffet, but we can't stop coming back here because it's so, so good. And obviously we paid for the privilege of um, being in a suite, so we're going to enjoy it. So my pear strudel has arrived, look at that. Does it look delicious? And yours probably is double chocolate. Oh, well, that's quite bitter actually. Is it's it? It's nice, but it's, um, yeah. It's very dark chocolate, yeah. isn't it? Karen forgot how to use her knife and fork. Oh, nice. That's the thing, then you put it up to your face. That's it. Thank you. That's a good strudel. Right then, so we've had another fabulous meal in the Club Orange, and now it's back to the cabin. After a full day out, isn't it, Paulie? Full day. So it'd be nice to just chill out on a balcony. You're left here at five o'clock this morning. No, but it was early, wasn't it? So, Vegas has been in and tidied our room. Look at all this. So yes, tomorrow we're in Glacier Bay. So that's lots of information there. And obviously our daily program. But we're going to go and chill out on the balcony because the sail away, we're all aboard at 7.30, isn't it, Paulie? Yes, indeed. Because um, we want to admire more of this fabulous view. If Paul can unlock the door. <laughs> Ooh, it's a bit blowy now. Yeah. But look at this. It is a bit windy, actually. But how fabulous, isn't it? Royal Princess is still with us, and so is Crown Princess, but Celebrity Solstice is gone. We invited uh, Jerry and Jill over for, or well, they came around with some bubbles, and we um, stood on the balcony, or sat on the balcony, and just watched a, a lovely, lovely sail away, as you can see here. <laughs> bubbles time! Duck? Yeah, so he's pointing it my way. <laughs> I was just going to say, ah. You might be in the line of fire over there. It's coming. It's coming. Ready? Ready? Yep. Ready? Wee! Oh, <laughs> Very <that's> controlled. <laughs> ah, well done. were so rock and roll we were so tired from the, to the day's excursion and the daily yeah. floors uh, excursion and exertions we had an early night well we didn't we well said, it wasn't you know an early what? night but we didn't even go out we didn't we thought let's make the most of our suite um we were so tired and i just wanted to just chill out in the in the cabin and you put garden guardians of the galaxy on didn't you i going to call it gardeners of the galaxy no guardians though. of the galaxy yeah, it's about this troop of people they go around and they tend people's tomatoes and runner beans <laughs> and stuff gardeners of the galaxy yeah so we had a lovely chilled out evening just uh, in the in the in the suite i keep saying coming in the suite um and Red Ready for the big one. Yes. Because next up. Glacier, glacier, however you like glacier to say it. Glacier Bay. Bay. Join us in our next video when we visit the jewel in the Alaskan crown, Glacier Bay.